All right, ladies and gentlemen, for any gentlemen who are watching today too, thank you for joining us for another episode of Stories of Christmas Joy. I am overjoyed, like I say all the time, absolutely delighted and overjoyed to introduce you to my very dear friend, Tammy Whitehurst. She's a motivational speaker who is based out of Texas, but this girl travels all over the country. And you've probably seen her a time or two, maybe at your church, because she keeps her calendar quite busy. And she's a big fan of airports, from what I understand, too. (laughs) (laughs) Tammy, thank you so much for being here with us. Would just introduce yourself, take take a minute or two to introduce yourself, and then we are going to go right into some stories of Christmas joy today. Well, first of all, I'm so glad to be here with you, Christine, and you probably saw my husband kind of skittle through a while ago. Yes, he brings me great joy, and the last thing that he would have ever wanted to do was come in on this, but I will also tell you that he is overjoyed right now because he had lost his iPhone this morning. Mm. It was showing that it was in a parking lot, and He has been looking for four hours for it, and I don't know the story behind him finding it, but I could tell by the look on his face that he is overjoyed. So (laughs) therefore, I will find that out after I get off. It's great to be here, and I wish you lived next door because, oh, the things we could get into, my friend. Yes, for sure, with our coffee mugs. That's right. (laughs) Go ahead. Tell us about yourself, because not everybody that might follow my page knows about you yet, which is all right. They need to get to know you. Well, I'm a women's speaker, and you can find out a lot about me through my website, which is TammyWhitehurst.com. I also run a daily devotional on Facebook. So if they go to Tammy Whitehurst Speaker on Facebook, they will find a daily devotional Monday through Friday. And for all of you out there who are writers, I love to have what is called guest writers, not ghost writer, guest writer. <laughs> and what, what I do is I love to showcase you and I love to show people what you do for the Lord and your ministry through your writing and your words. So if you're interested in that, then I'm going to invite you to email me at TammyWhitehurst at gmail.com and I'll give you all the details. But I love this time of year. Mm. And before we dive in, Christine, I want to know if there's anything in particular that you would like to ask me, or I'll just take the reins and talk. Yes, I, I, <laughs> I'm i very happy to give you the reins because I know that you do are very experienced at talking. <laughs> and you've, ta- you've taught me so many things. So first up, I want you to share a story of Christmas joy. You know, I would love to share a story of Christmas joy. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to when it comes to Christmas, that is something that um, you know. There's many obvious reasons why Christmas should be at the very top of our list for holiday, but. Christmas is always that time of year whenever it is absolutely, it's beautiful in so many ways. However, when it comes to families getting together, that can be a very tough thing. And when it comes to gatherings of any kind, that can be a tough thing. But one of the things that I love when our family comes together is we do have this thing called Jump for Joy. I absolutely love it. And my son is by far the winner, no matter what. He can jump up, grab both sides of his feet. And I mean, he, all you see is air underneath him. (laughs) And he he can literally get off the air about five feet. And it amazes everyone. Everyone tries, but nobody can beat him. And he's, he is, in his mid thirties, which blows people away that he can still do that. But we also have a time during Christmas and I love this part. We have this time during Christmas where we say what we're grateful for. Mm. The most is is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about the things in our life 
that have brought us joy and we're thankful and we're grateful for that year. And every person does it. It, it is just one of those times where rarely can I not tear up because I'm going to tell you in the world that we live in, Christine, it is full of busyness and go, go, go. And, and there's very little, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's good. Yeah. To be still is yeah. something that, yeah, we just don't do a lot of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. I wanted to tell you when, about your son who jumps up and he gets his legs high. My daughter used to be a competitive figure skater and they call those the Russian splits. Like their legs go up and they, she used to do it on ice skates, Tammy. And her legs would go up and come back down on, on a blade on ice. Wow. <laughs> I know what you're, I know it's amazing that they can do that. Like how athletic, I could never do anything like that. So that's very cool. Well, I can assure you, I I know that that would never happen here. If I could get if I could get enough air underneath my feet to slip a small book underneath there, right, right, it would be miraculous. Yeah, but, you know, when it comes to this time of year, and as a women speaker, I do laugh with audiences a lot, a whole lot. However, eventually, all that is tossed aside, and we talk about the more serious side that we often deal with this time of year. Because what this time of year brings, Christine, is that time whenever people are saying, I love this, I love this time of year, I love this time of year, and then they quickly turn and they say, I hate this time of year, it's so stressful. I hate this time of year. So oftentimes I will find that people either wildly love it or they strongly dislike this time of year. And that is exactly what the enemy of joy would love. Mm. For us to just be weary, worn out, tired, exhausted, to give in to all of the gotta do this, gotta do that, and totally miss out on the reason for the season. And it's very easy to do. I, I often will have people say things like, you know, if I just had a Prozac salt lick that I could put outside the front door <laughs> for all of my family get there, I, I have people say things like that. And you know, oh, that'd be wonderful. Prozac salt lick right outside the front door. Everybody has to lick on it before the bolt comes undone. Yes. But it's not, but that's not reality. And so whenever we look at social media, this is what I have found is Christine, whenever people compare their life to what they see on social media, mm -hmm. that's when problems begin to happen because there's no hallmark Christmases. Mm -hmm. People want you to believe because, well, I don't even know that it's they want you to believe. They, we only put the best things on social media. Mm -hmm. Typically, we don't put the crash and burn day. We don't put the crisis days. We don't put the days whenever we feel like we have been hit by a bowling ball or a Mack truck. We don't do that kind of stuff on social. Most people don't anyways. But what we see on social media this time of year is decorated um, trees already before Thanksgiving. We see gifts that are underneath the tree and it's completed. And we see things around, we see things on the table. We, we just look at people where it looks like everything's perfect. And then we see all these angelic faces mm. that are sitting together all around the table with the perfect turkey that's been cooked perfectly. And, and everything that's on that table, absolutely flawless. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, that's not life. It rarely is there a table where somebody is not missing. Right. Rarely is there a table where somebody is hasn't got their cranky pants pulled up to their armpits. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, and so in most homes, I think that it doesn't look like the Hallmark pictures or the perfect pictures that we stage to put on the Facebook page. Yes. Um, I have found 
that most people's holidays have at least that they have at least a few things that can get their tinsel in a tangle. <laughs> it may be it may be siblings who don't see eye to eye. It may be those cranky and stressed relatives who always have road rage and they bring the road rage right into the house. Mm -hmm. It may be people who haven't spoken in years. Coming to the table or have not been to the table in a very long time. Maybe people who are awkward. It may be those very moody people who from time to time have a gigantic monstrous meltdown yes. right in front of everyone it might be those people and i know that there are people who never stop talking yep. <laughs> and, and so nobody really wants to sit by them because they never stop talking then we've got the then we've always got the relative that everybody has to tiptoe around um it seems to be that that relative is at every single table. Around that table may be that person that only wants to talk about politics and conspiracy theories, and we don't want to hear all that. It may be the control freak, or it may just boil down to the people who don't fit the mold called perfection. Mm. And what I have found in women what I have found in life and what I have found in my own day-to-day -day living is that there is no perfect people. We may seem like we have it all together. However, never is it all together. If it's all together, it's momentary and just, just hold on tight because it's probably going to crash like my husband not being able to find his iPhone this morning. And Whenever he's usually, usually if he does have to come in whenever I'm doing something like this, he is sneaking around and he is, he, he knows what I do. I know what he does. Yeah. And I also know right now that this morning he was stressed to the max. Mm -hmm. Right now he's jumping for joy. Right. <laughs> we were so praying, Christine. We were praying for the impossible to be possible. Because, you know, you, you, you lose an iPhone 13. Yes. The chances of you getting it back whenever you keep pinging it and it shows that it's in a parking lot, that is, that is slim to none. But I want to add right here, prayer is powerful. Mm -hmm. The impossible is always possible with God. Mm -hmm. And so we don't give up hope, whether it's who's going to be around the table or whether it's finding an iPhone in a parking lot. But instead of instead of getting um, grilled, instead of getting everything going overboard and feeling overloaded, sometimes we just have to stop. And when the person who tells you how bad everything tastes or that the turkey is overcooked and they never bring a thing to the table, <laughs> no, we all have those people. Yes, we do. <laughs> what it makes us want to do, instead of throwing our hands up and saying, hallelujah, we just want to shout a big boo. Yeah. And that is not, that is totally not the way that it should be at this season of the year. And so if that sounds more like a reality to a lot of you who are listening today, I cannot wait for this conversation to get jump started into how we can slow down, how we can see things differently this year, because the impossible is possible with God. Amen to that. And specifically, I'm bringing people together because of my book, Seeking Joy Through the Gospel of Luke, which by the way, everybody, Tammy was so gracious to write an endorsement for me. And she wrote, Seeking Joy takes us from the chaos of Christmas in a weary world to remind us of the gift of everlasting joy found only in Jesus Christ. That could just like be one sentence to describe this joy journey in the Christmas season because 
I wanted to ask you if you remember anything specifically from 2020, which is the year that I wrote this book because it was a season of weariness for all of us. And I learned so much in that season. And of course we were, you know, we were very weary and upset about what was going to happen that year, not being able to spend the holiday with extended family, etc. But in hindsight, I just, I really reflect on 2020 and I'm, I'm so grateful for the time that we took to slow down like you, you just brought up too. So do you, do you remember anything specifically about 2020 and how that might have changed your perspective? I do. Mm -hmm. We typically have a house full of people mm -hmm. and that year it wasn't. Mm -hmm. That was so sad to me mm -hmm. where instead of we still put up a Christmas tree. As a matter of fact, we put it up very early because 2020, we just wanted it to, to somehow we wanted to push forward to the holidays. That's the earliest I had ever got my Christmas tree up. <laughs> and I think many people felt that way. Yeah. As a speaker, uh, since I'm in Texas, we opened back up in the fall. You know how Texans are. We can get real rebellious at times. And so everything opened back up. And I had my fall engagements and my winter engagements, but I lost 35 speaking engagements um, in, a, in a short period of time from March until about September. And that was a tough time where there wasn't a whole lot to do. Mm -hmm. I had to learn things to do. And I will tell you this, that in 2020, I learned more about technology and social media I learned more about being still than any other time. And even though Christmas to me, I didn't have as many people here. The few people that were here, we had a very precious time. And it was not about gifts that year. It was, it was truly, truly about the gift of Jesus. And I will say, I saw it completely differently. We went to a candlelight ceremony in 2020. Mm. And it, it was like whenever the world stopped, yes, we're sad because we can't gather together. But when the world stopped, we had no choice but to turn our eyes upon Jesus mm -hmm. that Christmas. And turning our eyes upon Jesus was the best place for our eyes to be Turning our eyes upon Jesus is the best place for us to be all the time, but sometimes we have to totally be shut down in order to stop. Yes. I, I learned a lot that year, Christine. Yes, it was hard. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back. But if I could go back for the moments that I, that I sought the face of the Lord, so much so during that holiday season, and how it wasn't so much about things and stuff and gifts, but it was more about the Lord. That was the precious piece of 2020. Yeah, I think that so many of us experienced that and, and I am very grateful for it. And who knew that a book would come out of that season? That is wow. the last thing I was expecting. And, and you know my story, you would not have expected a Christmas devotional to be my first published book either. It's like crazy. But you know what? Your yes. Christmas, well, hold it up. Your mm -hmm. Christmas devotional. I read it last year and mm -hmm. I will read it again this year. I think that the Lord knew that the timing was so perfect mm -hmm. for that year. And yes. so you talk in this book so real. It's just real life. You give real experiences and you mm -hmm. make it to where, Christine, we can connect in a weary world. Yes. And and we realize that we're not alone. That's right. What, that's what I love about it. We realize we're not alone. Yeah. Well, one other one other question I wanted to ask you before we get off is do you have a favorite story from the Gospel of Luke? Because I absolutely love the Gospel of Luke. I love how he set out to write an orderly account. And I love how you can find joy in every single chapter from chapter one to chapter twenty-four. And so I just know you probably have something that really spoke to you through Luke. I do. And I will tell you, it's very hard to find one thing 
I know. <laughs> it's very hard to find one thing. I know. And so I narrowed it down to two, and I'll say it very quickly. Okay. Uh, first of all, in Luke 1, when Elizabeth is older than most women who get pregnant, mm -hmm. and yet Gabriel said that she would bear a child. And then whenever Mary, who said, I mean, she didn't think she could get pregnant because she was a virgin. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel assured her that she was going to carry the Messiah. You know, yeah. that's where the impossible is possible with God. And the other, and I mean, I really had to narrow it down to two. But <laughs> in chapter nine, and I love this, that's whenever Jesus is feeding the 5,000. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a lot more than 5,000. 5,000 is just the men that were counting. Right, right. So, yes, but he's feeding all of them. And so many times what we have a tendency to do is think that we're supposed to do everything. Mm -hmm. And all that God calls us to do, he doesn't call us to feed the 5,000. He calls us to bring the fish and the loaves. Mm -hmm. He literally calls us to obey. And there's a saying, Christine, and I... I and I hope you can remember it, that you say, it's not your job to finish that. Okay, my job, what I learned through a really difficult season of trial in the past couple of years is that my job is to trust God. God's job is the outcome. Yes. So stepping through those those seasons of trial in obedience, whatever you know the Lord is, is calling you to do, uh, yeah, uh, I, through that season of trial, my trust in God increased. And it's funny, my word of the year for 2021, when I was going through that time, was increase. And I actually got that from your partner in crime, Miss Lori Boroff. She, <laughs> she spoke that word into my life. And I was like, that's it. And that year, my faith increased, my trust increased, and my joy. I didn't think it would be possible for my joy to increase, but it, it did. It increases all the time. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if I if I can take one more minute and just yep. tell my favorite chapters in here. Okay. I absolutely love where you talk about witness and worship with joy. Mm -hmm. And it's actually on page 79 and it talks about Martha and Mary. Mm. Where where Jesus is um you know, Martha is working in the kitchen and she's scrubbing and she's fixing the food and she's preparing everything. I mean, after all, Jesus is at her house and she's really getting everything together. And Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus mm -hmm. and she is just soaking Jesus up. A lot of times I think Martha gets a bad rap, mm -hmm. but because without Martha's, um, things wouldn't be quite as organized. Things wouldn't happen. Right. But for those of us who are movers and shakers, and you and I are both movers and shakers, you know, when when God says something we want to obey, sometimes God doesn't say it, and we're doing it, and we have to obey and stop. <laughs> yes. But we are go, go, goers. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Martha was doing necessarily something terribly wrong. She was trying to prepare. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of being a busy woman, and I'm a very busy woman, in the midst of doing that, I have to stop the busy, stop doing what I'm doing, and take time to be with the Lord. To look at Mary, who Martha was just so upset about because her sister yeah. was right there just sitting at the feet of Jesus, enjoying Jesus, mm -hmm. while she was not enjoying herself. Uh, everything that she had to do and she wanted some help so often that's what we as women do we are go 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 mm -hmm. and like I said at the very beginning of this we've got to be whoa 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 yeah Slow. pull back the reins and saddle up with the savior because it's the one place that so often we neglect to go. Yeah. Yes. And you know, that is the passion of my heart to get women in the word every day, because that changed my life when I started doing it just a few short years ago. And one thing 
I, I'm with you. I think Martha gets a bad rap a lot too. But one thing I like to tell my coaching clients and my health coaching community is that it's great to exercise. Like when God calls us into living a healthy lifestyle, we want to move our bodies. We want to do all of that. But I always caution them to prioritize their time in the word before that exercise. Because, you know, so many women or people like to set that, I'm going to go to the gym at 5 a.m. Well, I'd rather that you get up and meet with Jesus at 5 a.m. You know, yeah. get that done first. And then, you know, the movement of your body, which we should prioritize, like Martha was prioritized, you know, like she had to do the preparations in the kitchen. I love that. That's one of my favorite stories too. When I go on podcast, that's one of the ones that I share through Luke too. So we one. we so, we're so relatable ladies to Martha <laughs> and Mary. We have so many of those moments in our lives, but yes, like Tammy said, I totally agree with the, whoa, 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 make sure you slow down. And during the Christmas season, try not to get overwhelmed, try not to get wrapped up in the chaos. So but Tammy, before I let you go, will you just let people again know one more time how they connect can connect with you and um, if there's any projects that you have going on right now that you want to let people know about okay they can connect with me through my website which is tammywhitehurst.com if they go to tammywhitehurst.com they can actually go to my facebook page through there they can sign up for a mailing list there they can actually get a free download which is one of my uh, it's a mini devotional but you are welcome to make as many copies as you want and put them in. The, I had a woman this morning, she emailed and she said, hey, I got your, the free mini devotional off of your site. She said, can I make copies of that and put in all the teacher boxes? I said, oh. absolutely. That's so, awesome. Yes, you're welcome to do that. And I actually do have a devotional called High Heels and Hallelujahs. And I've got 140 of those going out today, Christine. Wow. Awesome. It's, it's a $10 devotional that's great for a stocking stuffer. Yes. But even if you don't need that, if you just need somebody to pray with you, I know Christine is a prayer warrior. I believe in the power of prayer as we have seen today with my husband. But I want you never, never to forget that with God, all things are possible. Not some, not a few, but all things are possible. And I know that Christine, we have had conversations, many conversations, and I love to listen to her because she has grasped that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in second Thessalonians this morning about how we are to give thanks in all circumstances. So as we're heading into this Thanksgiving uh, time. That's another thing that we can keep in mind too, is to, despite your circumstances, I like to say, despite the heavy weight of your circumstances, we can give God thanks and glory, uh, through, through any season. So I'm so thankful that you are here with me, ladies. If you have not had the opportunity to meet Tammy in person, I would also like to invite you to, if you're a writer or a speaker, Come to the Christian Communicators Conference in 2023. It's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you will meet Tammy personally. And I am I think 99% I'm going to be there in 2023. So that would be awesome too. <laughs> All they, right. Yes, they can find that at christiancommunicators.com. Yes. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Tammy, so much for being here for Stories of Christmas Joy. You have blessed me tremendously and I will... Uh, catch you soon. All right. Oh, we're have, doing yeah. Oh, have a great day. Love you.